you know, what better way to start a Thursday than solving tray? So yesterday we did solving tray where it was right off the unit circle and you could just find it, correct? Then we did solving tray where it was right off the unit circle and we had to do the three steps. One was find the give the well give by itself, then find the reference angle, cap rule to get the arm, get your angle, right? This is three steps. So we're gonna use those today. But what we're gonna start with is something that isn't in like cos of e theta equals 0 0.8080. We're gonna have to get it there. Okay? Literally that's it. But we're gonna we're gonna do it together. Teamwork. Page two eleven. <clears throat> We're doing number five. A three cos theta minus one equals four cos theta. And we want it from zero to two pi. If you notice, two pi is not included, right? So if the answer two pi came up, I wouldn't be allowed to use it because it's not included, it's just less than. Okay, and as you can see over here, it's the 22nd. I don't know why that popped up. And it's 907, 43 seconds. I don't know how to get it to go away. I think it's half that. Okay, great. Um, all right. So our goal before we do the three steps is we have to have it equal to trig ratio equals answer, correct? So what can I do right now? I have a single trig and a single trig. Think of the trigs like they're X's. So I could do this if this makes it easier for you. You can go let X equals cos theta. And then I can go 3X minus 1 equals 4X. Now I solve for X, right? What could I do? Add the 1 over and We should get our x's together. Okay. So what are we going to do first? I really hope this is just silent because you know what you're doing. Not silent because you don't. How do I get my x's together? How do I move the 3x? Yep. You subtract it. Okay, it was silent because you... Now, if you don't do this, if you don't do a let statement, you can't just randomly throw x's in. Okay? You have to go let x equal cos theta so that we know what the heck x is. You can't just randomly be like, ah, there are x's now. Okay? So we subtract 3x. We're going to get negative 1 equals x. Now, once we have x by itself, we can actually go cos theta equals negative 1. Okay? We can bring the cos theta back. Or you could never make cos theta go away and we use combine them. But often people, if they switch them with x's, they can solve it a lot easier. So, is that going? Okay. Uh, so we need, we need where cos theta or x equals negative 1. Go to your unit circle. Remember, your unit circle is best to be seen in seen. Thank you, Trace. Oh, okay. yeah. Say, I can use your best friend. Mm -hmm. unit circle. Where is cos equal to negative 1? Where is x equal to negative 1? At pi, right? So theta equals pi. Some people will say 2 pi, but at 2 pi it's actually what? Positive 1, correct? And I wouldn't be able to keep include 2 pi. So it had this actually been cos theta equals positive 1, my only answer would be 0. Because my answer should be 0 and 2 pi, but I can't include 2 pi because it's not equal to it. Okay, this is it. So my answer is theta equals five. <clears throat> e. Group three, tan theta plus one equals zero. And the domain is negative pi is less than theta is less than or equal to two pi. Negative pi is less than theta is less than. Yep. Oh, I whispered. Am I 
Thank you for reminding me about the mic. That is swell. So excited. Oh, I'm doing so good. I solidly did not miss that mic since September and then now two days in a row. When I do something, I do it well, which is also includes not plugging that mic in. Yeah. Okay, so we have to get tan theta by itself. So what are we going to do? What we could do is what? Right? We can get over to the other side. We could go, if this is easier for you, let x equal tan theta, <clears throat> and then go root 3 x plus 1 equals 0, and then you solve it like a linear. So we subtract 1, root 3 times x equals negative 1, and then I have to divide by root 3. The problem with this is people will box it and say they're done. This is the problem with replacing tan theta with x. Because you're so used to getting x equals answers, you box it like that. And you're like, good, I'm done. You're not done. X wasn't even part of this question. You made it part of this question. So you should not box that. It should be now tan theta equals negative 1 over root 3. Okay. Um, so this one, if you don't know, tans and cotans can pop up as root 3s, or negative 1 over root 3s, or root 3 over 3, root 3 over 3. Um, they're actually off the unit circle. But if you don't spot that this is off the unit circle, what we can do is we can say, hey, I'm going to do the three steps. Step one, <clears throat> reference data. I'm going to get my reference angle, which I'm going to do tan neg 1 of 1 divided by root 3. Why did I not do negative? Even though the trig ratio is negative. Why did I not do negative? Because reference angles you always do positive, right? So it ends up in the first quadrant, right? Every single time you do positive. Now, I would do this in degree mode each time. The reason why I always do these in degree mode is because sometimes they're nice exact values of a radian, but they're never going to come out as an exact value because they're going to have the pi in them. Yeah. That's the second thing I'm thinking So if you go tan 1 divided by root 3 in degree mode, what do you get? 30, right? If you did it in radian mode, you're going to get pi divided by 6 in decimal form. I don't know what that is, and I'm not going to recognize it. Okay? So I always do them in degree mode just to see if it comes out nice. So in this case, it came out as a 30 degrees, which is pi over 6. Right? <clears throat> or I could say 30 degrees. It doesn't matter. As long as my answer in the end is in. Right. Step two, cash flow. This is tan theta equals negative one over root three. So the cash rule, all I care about is the sign and the trig ratio. So I need tan negative. Where's tan negative? In S and C. So it's here. And here. Right? And I know my boom boom. Boom boom. This is pi over six or thirty. So this angle here is one eighty minus thirty. Which is one fifty. This one is 360 minus 30, which is 330. 
Now, sometimes it's easier to do in degree mode because when you have a restricted domain, that's here. So this one is going to be from 180 degrees to 300, negative 180, sorry, to 360, technically, correct? So do both of those fit? 150 and 330, do they fit between negative 180 and 360? Yeah, because 0 to 360 is inclusive. But do any of them possibly fit negative as well? Let's check our coterminals. So we're going to do 330 minus 360, and I get negative 30. Does that fit? Yeah. What about the other one? 150 minus 360 equals negative 210. Did that fit? No, it's too big, right? So I actually have three solutions for this one. Theta equals negative 30. 150, 330, which is lovely, except my question was in what mode? Residue. So what do I have to do to turn these into radians? Degree to radians is really easy. Divide by 180, add a class. Right? Remember we did it on a whole unit circle. You divide by 180 and add a class. So 30 divided by 180 reduces to 1 over 6. So I'm going to get negative pi over 6. 150 divided by 180 gives me 5 pi over 6. So I'm going to add the pi. And then 330 divided by 180, I'm going to get 11 over 6 is what it reduces to, so 11 pi. Because remember, degrees to radians pi on top, so I multiply by pi divided by 180. So if I'm just doing this natural, I'm going to just divide by 180. Right? So degrees to radians is the easiest. So do I have to really measure it? No. Could I have? Yeah, I could have put pi minus pi over 6 dot pi pi over 6. 2 pi minus pi over 6 dot 1 pi over 6. I could have told me to use pi. Okay. <clears throat> See. Group 2. Sign up. Minus 1 equals 0. And my restricted domain is to be negative 360 and 360. And then D is 3 sine x minus 5 equals 5 sine x minus 4. So negative 360 to 180, not inclusive. We're going to try those two. So for the sine x1, we could go let x equal sine x. Um, I don't want to do x, it already has an x. I'm going to go let n equal sine x. So root 2, m, times 1 equals 0, add the 1, root 2, m equals 1, divide by root 2, m equals 1 over root 2, which is actually the same as um, root 2 over 2, right? So I have sine x equals root 2 over 2. On the unit circle, that happens at x equals here and here. So 45 and 135. And then I have to check my coterminals, right? I'm going to subtract 360 from each of them. So I'm going to get x equals 135 minus 360 equals negative 225. Does that fit? Yep, because it's from negative 360 to 0, 0 to 360. And then 45 minus 360 equals negative 315. And then x equals 45. 135, negative 225, negative 350. Okay. This one, I'm going to make n equals sine x. 
So I'm going to get 3m minus 5 equals 5m minus 4. When there's two m, I just move one of them. So I'm going to subtract the 3m. So I'm going to get negative 5 equals 2m minus 4. And I'm going to add 4. Negative 1 equals 2m. Divide by 2. m equals negative a half which is sine x equals negative a half. Sine x equals negative a half at the 30s, right? So 210 and 330. Do either of those fit in the domain? The domain is from 0 to 180. Do either of those fit? No? Let's check from 0 to negative 360. It's the terminal we see. I'm going to subtract 316 and I'm going to get negative 150. Does that fit? Yeah. And subtract 360 and I'm going to get negative 30. Does that fit? Yeah. So x equals negative 150 and negative 30. Make sure you guys um, that you use the variable that it actually has, right? So if it's an easy x, make sure you have x equals. That's the end of it. theta, make sure you have theta equals x. Okay? E and F. I'm going to write down and then we're going to move on to degree two. So E is three, cotan X plus one. So remember when you get cotan, you can just flip it down after and get tan, right? When you get cotan, you can flip it down after and get tan. Flip answers, not angles. So three cotan X plus one equals two plus four cotan X. And the restricted domain is negative 180, less than or equal, not less than or equal to, just less than, x less than 360, <clears throat> that's e, and then f is root 3 secant theta plus 2 equals 0, negative pi less than or equal to 0, or sorry, theta, less than or equal to 3 pi. So for this one, I'm going to go at n equal cotan x. I'm going to get 3m plus 1 equals 2 plus 4m. Subtract my 3m. 1 equals 2 plus m. Subtract 1, add me 2. <laughs> um, m equals negative 1. So cotan equals negative 1 over 1, technically, right? And then I immediately go, no thanks, tan x equals negative 1. Okay? Now you could have done your translation for tan over half of the 45. So you need to that. Right? You can go tan negative 1. Sorry, did you reference data? equal 10 neg 1 of a positive 1 and they'll get you 45. Why do the 1s and negative 1s happen at 45 for cotan and tan? Because it's anywhere in the denominator equal. Yeah, exactly. So the numerator and denominator would divide the cos by sine and sine by cos, right? Or x by y, y by x. And at 45, the x and y are the same number. So when you divide them out, you're going to get positive 1 or negative 1, right? So, you can do this, or you say tan is negative here and here, so it's going to be 45 here and here, so it's going to be 315, 135, both of which fit. And then we have to check um, 135 minus 360 is negative 225, which is too big. 315 minus 360 is negative 45, which is good. I'm going to do thetas, it's x's. Come on, let So x equals negative 45, 135, and 315. This one's a secant. So that's m equals secant theta. So I get root 3m plus 2 equals 0. 
root 3m equals negative 2, divide by root 3n equals negative 2 over root 3. m happens to be secant. And when I get secant, what can I do? Flip my answer and get cos, right? So cos theta equals negative root 3 over 2. Cos equals negative root 3 over 2 here and here. Which if I want to do in degrees, I can. It'd be 150, 210, which both fit. So this is negative 180 to, is this 540? 360 plus 180, 540, okay. Okay. So we're going to try out their coterminals and see what they get. So uh, 150 plus 360 equals 510, which fits. Um, 210 plus 360 equals 570, which does not. Um, and we check their coterminals the other way. 150 minus 360 equals negative 210. Doesn't fit. And then 210 minus 360 equals negative 150, which does fit, right? So my thetas are going to be 150, 210, because those fit. And then their coterminals are 510 and negative 150. And I'm done, right? No, I just lost that. Sadly, there might be really, royally good, bad things. Because my domain is in. Radians, my answer needs to be in. Radians. So 150 is 5 pi over 6. 210. Is 7 pi over 6. 5, 10 is in here and over 6. What's 5, 10? Where's it reduced to? Anyone? 5, 10 divided by 180. How did you get it? And maybe that's 5 pi over 6. Okay. Then what happens if we have degree two trace functions? So we call them linear trace, right? We're going to do degree two trace. So we're going to look at number seven. A. Two cos squared theta minus three cos theta plus 1 equals 0 to the restricted domain of 0 and 2 pi. So our first thing we can do is not overwhelm ourselves and make cos theta equal to n, right? Let n equal cos theta. So I'm going to go 2m squared minus 3m plus 1 equals 0. Now we're back to grade 11. Grade 10 factor and grade 11 solving, right? So we say what times what equals 2, what plus what equals negative 3. Negative 2 and negative 1. And I have to decomp because I don't have a 1 in front of my m squared, right? So I have to replace negative 3m with negative 2m plus negative 1m. So I'm going to get not an equal sign here. There's already an equal sign that I'm down there. I'm going to go 2m squared minus 2m minus 1m plus 1 equals 0. And I group the plus sign of the 3. Take out a 2m and I'm left with m minus 1. Take out a negative 1, and I'm left with m minus 1. So I get 2m minus 1 equals 0. m minus 1 equals 0. I have to solve them out. Here I'm going to add 1. 2m equals 1. 
n equals a half, this one's n equals one, and then people box it and move on. I like using m's because usually people won't box an m. They'll be like, what the heck is an n doing? An x, you guys box, you're like golden, x equals, that's the my whole life, right? But m's, you might think like, mm, what's up? So I let cos theta equal m, so I'm going to go cos theta equals a half, and cos theta equals 1. So once you actually do the part of grade 11 solving, you literally just have two linear trigs instead of one. With just the three linear trigs, right, you now just happen to have two that you have to answer. So it's twice the fun, really. So, we need to be 0 and 2 pi. Where is cos equal to a half? So 0 and 2 pi. I'll get a half. Pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So those are our two solutions for here. And then where is cos theta equal to 1? Where x is equal to 1, which is here, right? Which is at 0. Well, I'm putting a bracket. Which is at 0 and 2 pi. We agree? What's my catch? It can't be 2 pi. So it's just going to be theta equals 0. And so when I write my answer in the end, I'm going to go theta equals 0, pi over 3, and 5 pi over 3. So the only catch is if I get a cosecant or a secant or a cotan, and you take whatever I have as a fraction, flip it, and make it one of my primary trig ratios, right? I can pull it right off my unit circle, I go ahead. If I can't, I have to do the three steps. Reference angle, cast rule, get answer. <laughs> So your homework is page 212, 7B, C, and D.